So this edition of AEW Dynamite kicked off with the Undisputed Era coming down to the ring and the Young Bucks interrupted them. And both the Young Bucks and Red Dragon made their intentions towards the AEW World Tag Team titles clear with both teams saying that they'll become the champions. And then Orange Cassidy and the Best Friends came out to attack the Elite. And Adam Cole would hit a low blow on Orange Cassidy and then Chris Statlander would come out to help her friends. And then Adam Cole's girlfriend, Britt Baker, Baker came out to attack Chris Statlander. And this was just so cool. I've been waiting so long for these two to do something together. I will say, though, that it does seem a little random for Chris Statlander to come out now. Like, where was she for all the weeks that the Super Click was attacking Orange Cassidy? Like, she's been their friend for a while now. Where was she then? But honestly, I don't care too much because the fact that Britt Baker and Adam Cole are doing stuff together now as a couple is honestly so cool. So Britt Baker curb stomped Statlander and then Adam Cole took out Orange Cassidy. Cassidy with a super kick and then Cole was about to do his signature pose with the Young Bucks where they kiss him on both cheeks but Britt interrupted them and planted a kiss on her boyfriend herself which was just so badass. At this point what we're learning about Adam Cole is that everybody just loves him. And then CM Punk took on Wardlow with MJF at ringside and Wardlow did what he always does during his matches. He just powerbombed Punk over and over and over again and he was about to cover Punk for the Pin, but MJF insisted that he keep going and I mean like he destroyed Punk like he powerbombed Punk through a table at ringside but in the end it wasn't enough because MJF got a little bit overzealous telling Wardlow to powerbomb Punk that Punk caught him by surprise with a small package and squeaked by with a win and after the match they continued the story where we saw the first few cracks in the partnership between MJF and Wardlow but then Sean Spears came down and separated them and I I will say that the night that Wardlow decides to turn on MJF, he's going to get an absolutely enormous pop. Like, I'm telling you, AEW knows how to do long-term storylines, and this is obviously setting up for some point down the line when Wardlow turns on MJF and they go into a rivalry. I know a lot of people, myself included, made this comparison, but this is really shaping up to be like the Triple H-Batista rivalry from 2005. Like, hopefully, this is going to just catapult both Wardlow and MJF to superstardom, and I'm so excited for that because they both deserve it. And then Dante Martin took on Team Taz's Will Hobbs, and then towards the end, Starks was trying to interfere, but Jay Lethal came down and stopped him, and then Dante finished off Hobbs with his nosebleed finisher, and then he pinned Hobbs and walked to the back with Jay Lethal, and then Alex Marvez interviewed Chris Jericho and the Inner Circle, and Kingston interrupted the interview and said that Jericho was preventing Santana and Ortiz from becoming tag team champions, and Jericho said that if Kingston interfered in Sammy Guevara match tonight that Jericho would come after Kingston. And then MJF came out onto the ramp and announced that next week it was going to be CM Punk against Sean Spears. And I honestly feel like this is shaping up to be like the five labors of Jericho or whatever the hell he called it when MJF picked out different opponents for his rival. And once again, he used his pinnacle members, Sean Spears and Wardlow on his rival. I don't know, I'm just noticing the parallels, and I honestly don't know if I like it. And then AEW World Champion Adam Page came down to the ring, and Dan Lambert interrupted him, and after insulting the hangman, Adam Page challenged Lambert to come down and get into the ring with him, but Lance Archer made his return to AEW and came down instead, and he attacked Adam Page with a steel chair, and then Archer finished the assault by planting Page onto the seat of the steel chair with his signature signature blackout slam. So the way I was looking at it, with Adam Cole being the number one ranked wrestler in AEW, I thought he was going to be next in line for a world title match, but I guess now that Lance Archer has inserted himself into the title picture with a big return, I'm guessing he's actually going to be next in line. Plus, Cole has this stuff going on right now with the super click and the undisputed era, so we'll probably have to clear that stuff up before we do anything with him. 
Oh, and speaking of the Undisputed Era, I saw a rumor online. Now, just hear me out, all right? I know what it sounds like when I say that I heard a rumor, all right? I know the wrestling dirt sheets can be full of shit, and you should probably only take what they say with a grain of salt, but I've seen reports that the Undisputed Era's name in AEW, since obviously they can't use the actual name, the Undisputed Era, because it's copyrighted by WWE, is going to be Paragon, which... I honestly don't really like, but who knows, maybe it's not even going to be their name. But anyways, next, Tony Schiavone was backstage and interviewed Arn Anderson with Brock Anderson and Lee Johnson, and Tully Blanchard and FTR interrupted them, and they challenged Brock Anderson and Lee Johnson to a tag match next week, which they accepted. And I honestly completely forgot about this rivalry between Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. Like, they were teasing for a while that they were going to have a match or something, but I honestly don't know what came of it, so hopefully they actually get a match soon so they can close out this storyline. And then Hikaru Shida took on Serena Deeb, and as Shida was making her entrance, Deeb attacked her from behind, taking out Shida's injured knee that she was working on from like the first round of the TBS women's title tournament. And Deeb just kept attacking the knee and eventually the ref just called off the match. And as the doctor and the ref were checking on Shida, Deeb just came back into the ring and cracked Shida with a kendo stick. And then Tony Schiavone was backstage with Christian Cage and the new AEW World Tag Team Champions Jurassic Express. And Jungle Boy laid out an open challenge to any of the top five teams, and the Dark Order accepted the offer for a match this Friday on Rampage, which Jurassic Express accepted. And then Matt Hardy took on Penta El Zero Miedo, and I guess Penta's going to have to do singles matches for a while now, now that Ray Phoenix has been taken out with that horrible injury that he suffered during the tag team title match. And in the end, Penta picked up the win when he hit Matt Hardy with the fear factor, and then after the match, he cut a promo and called out Malachi Black. And then the lights went out, and Malachi Black appeared in the ring, and he attacked Penta El Zero Miedo, as well as his manager. And then the Varsity Blondes and Julia Hart came down, since they've been having problems with Malachi Black over the past few weeks. And then the lights went out again, and when they came back on, the rumors that were circulating over the past few weeks turned out to be true because Brody King appeared in the ring and made his debut for AEW and both King and Black took out the Varsity Blondes and stood in the ring to end the segment. So when Malachi Black started teasing his own stable within AEW called the House of Black, immediately the rumor started that Brody King was coming to AEW and he was going to be a member of the House of Black and team with Malachi and it turned out to be true, which is so great to see. Honestly, with teams like Red Dragon and the House of Black in AEW, their tag division is just going to be fully stacked. But next, we had the Acclaimed facing off against Bear Country, and in the end, Max Caster would hit his signature elbow drop, which he calls the mic drop, and pin Bronson to get the win. And then Sting and Darby Allen would come out, and they both took out the Acclaimed and destroyed the boombox. And then we had a video package of Pac, who's been out since Malachi Black sprayed his black mist in Pac's face. And Pac basically informed everyone that his sight was gone, but he's never seen so clearly. And then Tony Schiavone interviewed Matt Hardy backstage and Andrade El Idolo came up to him and said that he wanted to work with him. And I feel like now's a good time to talk about Andrade because since he got to AEW, I feel like he hasn't really done much and he's kind of been bouncing around to find something that'll work. Like, I imagine when Andrade got to AEW, he would have a similar run to Malachi Black, but it kind of feels like he has no direction. But anyways, next we had an interim TNT Championship match between the interim champion Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia, and Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho were at ringside. And during the match, Sammy would hit crossroads to send a message to his future opponent, Cody Rhodes, and then he finished Garcia off with the GTH and pinned him to retain his interim title. And then as Sammy was being presented the belt, 2.0 would attack him from behind and then Jericho would come out with his baseball bat and clear them out. And then Eddie Kingston came in and he and Jericho got into it. So overall, a pretty good dynamite and we'll see what happens on Rampage. 